Here to discuss the fallout in an exchange exclusive from the Milken Institute Global Conference in Beverly Hills is Emmanuel Roman. He is the CEO of PIMCO, or Manny, if I may. Thank you so much for your time. Do you want to just jump in here when you hear all the gloom and doom? I mean, should are we right to be concerned? Well, uh, we should be concerned, Kelly, and, and thank you for having me. I think we have a situation where we have three things happening at the same time. We have the debt ceiling problem, which needs to be resolved and most likely will be resolved. But I think we're going to have rocky markets until mid-June to mid-July. I think you have a situation with the banking system where you have a lot of volatility in the banking system and clearly regional bank on the stress. And then you have a geopolitical situation where there are issues with China which are not going to go away. And so all of this, we need to navigate markets and get to a better place. And, and I think you're right to be concerned. Yeah. The most likely scenario in our view is that you have a soft landing with a recession uh, by the end of the year. But of course, they are tail on both sides. Yeah, I mean, so, soft landing, recession. We're looking at the regional banks down again today. How do, how do policymakers stop this problem, Manny? If they came to you, what would you say? Well, I think Randy summarized it very well. I think first and foremost, you need to fight inflation and you need to hike rates. And as you said, we expect the Fed to rise rates by 25 bips and then pause. And pause, as my partner and friend Dan Iverson was saying to me this morning, doesn't mean stop. It means pause. And so it will be data dependent. And if, if, if inflation remains high, the Fed will rise again. So I'm we will have a pause. And then we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm surprised to hear you as somebody, as such a financial markets firm, to hear you say inflation is still the number one problem. I mean, the markets are indicating, look, the, the yield curve is now 171 basis points inverted. Doesn't that say to you that an economic crash is a bigger risk than uh, stubbornly high inflation in the next six months? No, I think, the, I think what the yield curve is telling you is the central case is that there will be a mild recession and the market is telling you that you expect inflation to be slightly above three and that the Fed will cut rates starting in the second half of the year and into 2024. And you have two tail. You have a tail of a hard landing, which is a 20% probability. And you also have a tail of no recession, which we don't think is very likely, but it's certainly possible and also has a 20% probability. And always think that the yield curve is an average of views and so you have a central case, but you also have two separate uh, uh, yeah. scenarios. It just, it, you know, it has a pretty good track record, right? It, it kind of telling us the storm is coming. And I'm, a... I just don't hear a lot of concern from policymakers. I mean, it, it, the fact that we're now hiking as a banking crisis is, first people said it was just going to be one day in March. Then it was just going to be one weekend in March. Then it was just going to be First Republic. Now it's just going to be, I mean, the narrative keeps changing. Doesn't that worry you? Well, we don't know what we don't know. I think, I think the regulator is extremely well aware of what's happening with the banks. I think the FDIC is dealing with it. I think the resolution of First Republic was exactly what you expect uh, the FDIC to do. And then we'll take it from there. I think none of us uh, know what's happening inside this bank. Of course, we look at the same data. You do. And of course, the move of cash from deposit to money market or from smaller regional bank to large bank is unprecedented. I would also uh, signal what uh, we, we should have thought about, but it's pretty obvious, is that the modern mean of technology make wire inside the banking system much faster and much quicker. Yeah. And so one of the lessons from the SVB situation is that people could literally wire all of the money within a few hours. And that's new, and I think that's a response that policy uh, holder would have to think about in terms of how they deal with the next problem if there is a next problem. Right. That being said, the PIMCO view is that the U.S. banking system is in pretty good shape.